Hi, welcome to APS Payroll's webinar and demonstration of their solution. I'd like to turn it over to Erica Taylor. Erica, welcome. Hi, thank you, Pamela. Um, I am excited to uh, do another webinar with you guys and your clients. Um, I think today will be very informative as we go through the system. Um, before we get started, I want to make sure that everyone can see my screen and see that um, we at APS want to make payroll and the HR easier. Yes, ma'am, we see it. Awesome. So the hard part's over. Um, the next thing we'll do is talk about um, today's agenda and then briefly go over uh, the history of that um, of APS, which we talked a little bit about last time. Um, and for anybody that missed the last webinar, you go to Dynavistics website and access that, um, as well as the slide deck that we used for that webinar. Um, <clears throat> so today, as we look at the agenda, we will do an APS team welcome, and then do a quick recap um, of APS as a company. Um, talk a little bit about our key differentiators, which is technology and service. And then we will get into the system. We will go through APS Online, which is um, our solution, go through the main menu and go through some of that dashboard navigation. And then from there, talk about client support and some of our help center resources. Um, and then we'll go through employee lifecycle workflow, which will involve um, quite a few things. And so I'm excited for you guys to see how that workflow um, works in our system. We'll also take a look at the self-service portal um, for employees and managers and all the neat features that are involved with that. And then lastly, go through payroll and talk about Great Plains integration uh, via export file. We'll take some time at the end as well to wrap and answer some questions um, that you guys have, if that sounds good to everybody. Right. Wonderful, Erica, let's do it. All right, perfect. To introduce you to your APS team, sorry about that. Um, again, my name is Erica Taylor. I'm a partner account executive APS. I have uh, been with the company since 2013, holding several uh, sales roles. And, and really my goal today, of course, is to uh, provide you with more information about APS, um, not only as a company, but um, about our system. And uh, Jason Greer is actually going to help in doing that today as he is our solutions consultant manager. Um, Jason, I'll give you a, a little bit of time to introduce yourself. <laughs> Excellent, thanks. Thank you, Erica. And good morning, everyone. Again, this is Jason. Uh, so in a moment, when we get into the technology, I'll be leading us through the presentation. And Erica has introduced our, our roadmap for today. So we'll stay high level. We're going to introduce as much as we can. But the, the goal is just to give everyone a good high level understanding of the system's capabilities. That's right. And then um, if any of you tuned into the last webinar, you um, were introduced to Leanne Leone. She uh, will pop in from time to time, but she oversees the partner channel. Um, and so she is aligned with the organization to make sure that all of our partners and their clients' needs are being met. So if there are any issues that arise, um, any guidance that um, is needed, she is the one to make sure that those needs are met and issues um, are resolved. All right. So next, we'll talk about um, APS very briefly before we get into the system. <clears throat> So APS was founded over 25 years ago. We began as a payroll and tax compliance company. And since then, through our 
proprietary technology, we have built time and attendance and HR on top of that uh, same database. So we will be looking at a centralized database when we get into the system. Um, <clears throat> it is very uh, logically designed for simple navigation, and that leads to high adoption and a very um, high level of usability among clients that may be coming from an in-house system <clears throat> and aren't uh, used to utilizing something that is web-based. So that's something that you'll see throughout today as well. Um, a key differentiator um, is also our support. So we have a unique service model with both a reactive and proactive approach. Reactive is gonna be our support side. So that's gonna be your day-to-day -day, um, needs. Your client support team um, is assigned to you once you've transitioned from implementation and they are dedicated. So that's not gonna change. You're not gonna be calling into a call center or talking to a different person every time or having to deal with unresolved um, issues. We have always been a customer centric organization and keeping that client experience in mind as we have built our technology and as we grow, um, has really shown through our retention rate as we have had a 98% retention rate um, since definitely since I've, I've been at the company. So keeping that focus and prioritizing the client experience has been um, highly beneficial for us, but also, and more importantly, highly beneficial for the client. So as we get into the technology today, I think some of the things that we uh, definitely want to focus on is that centralized database, the ease of use, and that simplified navigation that Jason will absolutely um, be showing us. So if there are any questions um, that are urgent and that we need to address during the presentation, Pamela, if you want to kind of field those through chat. Um, and, and kind of stop us on the way we can address those or we can wait until after the presentation of the system and address them at the end, if that sounds good. Yeah, let's hold them to the end and let's address them all at the end, just to make sure you don't already go over the question in the presentation. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, let's see. I am going to pass this along to Jason. Excellent, thank you, Erica. And again, everyone, this is Jason. I am sharing my screen. And we are going to begin with a, a brief introduction to the technology. Um, so I am currently logged into APS Online. And we're gonna start with the perspective of an administrator, of course, a user that does have more full access into our system. Uh, later on in the presentation, we will also introduce self-service and that's where our managers and employees would access either an employee's personal information or of course that manager uh, if they uh, have access to certain groups of employees it could be for attendance edits or, or other items that may need their attention as supervisors um, so uh, as we land on the main menu console, and, and we reference consoles and not modules, because as Eric has introduced, our technology is completely unified. So it's one database, one system of record, but it's also scalable technology. Um, when we opened our doors back in 1996, very narrowly focused on payroll processing and tax service. So our first version of APS Online was, again, strictly payroll and tax. Uh, our clients came to us and they wanted to have that attendance solution or the HRS on top of that same payroll database. So that's how we have developed our system and how our technology has evolved. Uh, now these different uh, tiles you're seeing on my main menu console are configurable by user. So when I log in the system, I like to have you know, quick access to my favorite reports. I like to see if I have time off request or if we're using some HR tools and, and uh, benefits administration is configured. Well, I can see if I have pending benefit elections. And we'll get into some of these a little bit later on the presentation. Uh, but again, the idea is to allow each user to pick and choose 
from the various console pages, specific analytics or alerts that are important to that individual. <clears throat> now, of course, as I'm working through the system, if I need a refresher on a particular topic, or maybe I need to reach out to my support team on every page of APS Online, you'll see the logo in the bottom right corner. I can click on the logo and it will open up the resource center. So I'll have quick access to help videos or articles on how to accomplish a particular task within the technology. But if I do need to reach out to my team, this is my dedicated support team here for Superior Systems. So certainly I can email with them or submit a request or ticket. And of course we give our clients the ability to, to call their, their support team directly. So it rolls right into your team's line to be able to quickly uh, get any questions uh, answered in a situation resolved. <clears throat> so for the perspective of administrator, again, Superior Systems does have the full suite of services enabled. However, as a reminder, if we had a client that did not need attendance, well, they simply don't see the attendance console. Later on, if their needs change, then we can simply enable uh, that solution and then configure our technology to allow their employees to record time with various uh, time capture methods. Now, as I transition into introducing more of the pre-hire side of things, so, so we have a solution called APS Hire. APS Hire includes both recruiting as well as electronic onboarding. Again, uh, an optional service that is enabled based on each of our client's requirements. Uh, so if we have a client that is enabled APS Hire, they would simply toggle into their APS Hire dashboard, um, for example, from my HR console. So simply clicking into Hire would open up my uh, dashboard for the recruiting platform. Now, I already have APS Hire open from a, a previous meeting this morning, so I'm just toggling into that dashboard view. Uh, for this perspective of the administrator, I can see that I have 256 new applicants. So I've got a little work to do today to review our new applicants. Um, we currently have eight active jobs, and then I've got a couple of jobs that I need to refresh. So basically, if I haven't filled an open position within 30 days, well, I can simply just refresh one of these jobs, and it's going to put that job post uh, on top of our uh, job board's newsfeed network. So for example, clicking refresh here for the director of sales is gonna put that job posting back on the top of the page for, and to highlight those automatic sources, Indeed, Zip Recruiter, uh, Your Careers page, Glassdoor, et cetera. So all these job boards are automatically included within APS Hire. So as we're posting out for open positions and we're really casting that wide net to um, you know, get as many qualified candidates into the database as possible, but we can also add local job boards. I can tie this into my social media accounts. Um, and again, the idea is to attract as many applicants as possible. And then we need, once we are attracting those applicants and we need a way to quickly filter through our candidates, right? So um, when we're configuring a new job post, well, I also can configure some specific pre-screening questions. Um, I'm just gonna, quickly introduce what it would look like for a applicant to apply. So this is their demo company's hospitality, uh, which is THM Hospitality. So this is their careers page. Um, the key thing to consider here is these would be um, your videos or photos that you want displayed on the careers page. It's your color scheme that's gonna uh, mimic your corporate site. And if I'm an applicant and I wanted to apply for this director of sales position, on your careers page, when I click to apply, it's going to take me to a landing page where I'm reading through the job description. If I have an Indeed profile, I've got a single click to fill out my demographic information. I can attach my you know, resume cover letter, and then I have the ability to respond to these pre-screen questions. So these are going to be required. And then based on these responses, I may get disqualified if I don't have the proper experience or we can even have a special alert for that hiring manager to say, hey, you may have a perfect applicant. Um, certainly, we're going to notify the administrator of whenever they're getting new candidates, but we have what's called a fast track feature that also sends a special alert for a potential perfect candidate here. You can see I don't have to create a username and password to apply. 
Um, it's mobile enabled for those applicants to submit their information. The branding is consistent regardless of where the candidate found the job post. Everyone is applying in the same manner. Now transitioning back into the view of that administrator and just toggling into, let's look at some of the applicants I'm currently reviewing. Now, I could filter my list, right? Maybe I only want to see candidates that have applied for a particular job or for a certain location. Um, I have additional filter options. Let's say I just want to focus my attention on anyone that has a pre-screen score of 50 or above. So it's filtering my list of candidates, and now I can focus my attention on what may be um, you know, the best options for these different positions. As I hover over that score, you can see how those applicants responded to those pre-screen questions. I can see, uh, of course, at a quick glance, what position they've applied for, if there's a recent role in the current step of the hiring process. So from this dashboard view, I could advance someone to the next step. I could disqualify or deactivate them. I can communicate with them on the fly, either by email or text message right here from the dashboard. Or if I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into the information we've gathered for this applicant, well, this is the hiring workflow for our regional sales support manager. So we're reviewing the applicant. Uh, uh, the applicant's going to take some assessments, doing a phone screen interview. I can see the resume. I can initiate a background check right here from their profile. But Again, this would be a configurable hiring workflow based on how we hire our different groups of employees. So you certainly don't have to follow this workflow. All this is completely configurable within the system. Everything would be attached to the profile as far as the evaluation. Uh, you can complete scorecards. So for example, if, if we allowed our supervisors to um, interview their, their applicants. Well, I can create a scorecard that I want that supervisor to use. That way they're asking relevant questions or finding out the information we need about the experience and background. And then as the administrator, I have quick access to that scorecard and also could see any activity associated with this candidate, right? If we have attached additional documents, what communication has been sent back and forth to the applicant or if we're just adding comments as a, a note about something for the candidate. <clears throat> so transitioning back into our view of our applicants. And of course, when we're ready to move forward, <clears throat> we can also initiate the onboarding process right here from this dashboard view. So if I had any candidates that they were in the, you know, the next step of the process would be to uh, initiate hire. That would be, of course, our next step here. So by initiating the hire button, it's going to send um, their, of course, uh, new hire, the welcome message with a link to the onboarding package. Uh, so here's an example of what a new hire would see. So Cindy here is already uh, created her password. So it's the first time she'd have to create a password to have access to her onboarding paperwork. And of course, once we toggle into uh, their information, if, if Cindy had applied as a normal applicant, if I go back to her info page, she's able to confirm her demographic profile. But if something's changed, she can certainly update this information. Mm -hmm. And at this point, she would be required to provide her date of birth and social. So once she has completed her profile, then she'll complete her onboarding paperwork. Uh, a couple of things to note here, all federal and state forms are automatically included. Anytime one of those federal state forms change, then the system will update those forms on our client's behalf. But then we'll just digitize the other company specific forms that need to be completed during onboarding. Um, whether it's just handbook acknowledgements, we can see that uh, Cindy signed off the handbook, watched the welcome video, but maybe she's ready to complete her I-9. So when she clicks on the particular form, well, it's also going to pre-populate her demographic profile from the previous My Info tab, right? She just needs to confirm her social and respond to the citizenship question, and then she'll be able to e-sign um, the particular document. So once we have completed the paperwork, of course, um, 
the system is going to automatically create the new hire profile. And as the administrator, I'm simply alerted that I have a new hire waiting to be approved. So as I don't have to key in Emma's information, I'm just able to verify um, everything is accurate for her profile. And I would simply save this as my next active employee. And uh, of course, I'm gonna leave uh, this demo uh, employee pending here, and let's just jump into a current active employee. So I wanna work on Andrew Johnson's profile today. So this is my employee list. I did a quick filter just for days. Uh, a couple of things to highlight here when we're searching for an employee, I can search by department, I can search by name, uh, social, et cetera. But also if we have clients that are managing multiple entities within APS Online, and if I have access to multiple companies, I have one check mark, I can search across multiple companies and I'm redirected at that time. So I don't have to log into separate systems. Now, when I click on Andrew Johnson's profile, it's gonna introduce our employee record. So if he had just completed onboarding, then it's updating his address. It is filling out his tax settings based on what he completed on his federal and state forms. And then all of the documents or paperwork he completed during onboarding are automatically attached here to his profile. <clears throat> so that way, no one has to manually key in this data. It automatically creates a record. Of course, and there's some various settings on his record that may determine eligibility for benefits, what benefit plans he's able to participate in. Um, so again, we're working on one centralized database. I'm not managing HR information or attendance information in another platform. Uh, as we look at Andrew Johnson's rates and deductions, if we allow him to record you know, time or charge time to different positions or different departments, then based on what's on his settings, we'll also allow him to record that when he clocks in and clocks out for time and attendance. Now to reiterate that for Andrew on his time tab, we're allowing him to clock in and out on their web punch. And then if we also want to enable mobile, then I simply can enable mobile for Andrew. And then you can use uh, what we call clock zones. So basically geofencing your locations and the employee has to be on site at your locations before they would be able to clock in and clock out. Now we're gonna quickly introduce manager and employee self-service. So transitioning to eSelfServe, I'm currently logged into Andrew Johnson. So he is one of our supervisors within Superior Systems. When he logs in, he lands on his manager dashboard uh, so if we're delegating to-do items for Andrew, such as correcting missed punches or requesting time off, well, he only sees alerts for his staff or his team that he's managing. We can see we have a, a request here for Ron White that wants to take you know, uh, some vacation hours. Uh, we don't have any current con conflicts for Ron's department. We can see the details associated with the request of uh, not only the current balance, but the projected remaining balance if we approve this request. So we have all the information for Andrew. Again, if we give him the permission to approve or deny, uh, if he does approve the request or deny, then the employee is automatically notified. Of course, if his hours are approved when we process payroll for this week in April, these hours will automatically flow, in, flow into the payroll process. So delegating these to-do items to supervisors, either for visibility or to allow them to um, correct attendance items, complete performance reviews, et cetera. You also notice there's a couple other components of self-service for Andrew. So even though he is a manager, he's also an employee within the organization, of course. And if he's a manager that we require to clock in and clock out, well, this is his time clock access. He can clock in and clock out like I said, either on the computer or I enabled mobile. Um, I, if we have a, a schedule built out, Andrew would see a schedule. It defaults to his base department. But again, if he needs to work in a different position, he can make that selection and simply clock in. Real-time access as the administrator, I can see uh, his in and out punch in real time. And then the final component of self-service will be Andrew's personal information. So as an employee, does he have to-do items? Is he eligible for enrolling in benefits? Does he need to sign off on a new document or complete a performance review? His task would notify him. He would have the alerts uh, within the mobile app as well. 
he has access to pay stubs. So if he needs to print a most recent pay stub he has back in January or go back to 2014 and, and print these uh, various vouchers or pay stubs, uh, we don't ever purge any data out of the system. So of course, Andrew would always have access to his historical payroll as well as tax forms. So reprinting W-2s, 1095Cs are all accessible here within self-service. We can also allow employees to update their personal information, enroll in benefits, of course, have access to their documents. And as we've seen with the request for Ron, they can submit time off requests uh, based on plans that they're eligible for, right? So it's all specific to the employee. Uh, these would be uh, your accrual plans. And of course, the system has logic built in to know when maybe an accrual rate increases based on length of service or if there's cutoff hours um, on an annual basis or so many carryover, carryover hours, et cetera. So the final step for Andrew would be to, as it relates to a payroll process, would be to approve his employee's time card. So he's alerted uh, if, again, if he has that security role, that's time to approve time cards so we can go through the payroll process. So we can delegate the approval of time cards to a supervisor, but of course the administrator has full visibility into approving everyone's time cards. A couple of things to note here, the, the system if we're processing for, you know, let's say the last two weeks, and if we have a missed punch or if there is a time off request that hasn't been addressed, well, of course I can't approve that employee's time card till we either correct a missed punch or, or approve or deny the time off request. That way we don't have um, potential a mistake on that payroll. So I'm gonna to toggle into the payroll console. Uh, normally we would create a payroll batch. I'm just gonna edit um, a, a payroll batch we have created here. It's currently dated for the 28th. I'm gonna update it one day uh, just because we had another example that was also active. So we're gonna say this is gonna be our uh, March 1st uh, check date. This is a scheduled payroll. I can do my initial sort by either last name or department number, et cetera. On this example, I'm just gonna process for our semi-monthly pay group. So if you do have employees that are paid in different pay frequencies, we certainly can support those different pay groups. Um, but right here on step one, if I haven't taken action, if I haven't approved that new hire, or if I need to approve an employee update, well, step one is gonna remind me to take action on those items. Um, so again, the logic built in to make sure that when we're processing payroll, then all the to-dos are out of the way. Moving to step two is just confirming my incomes that we're processing for this upcoming check date. Uh, we have a lot of available incomes for this demo instance that we use for various presentations, but these would be configured based on each client's requirements. Uh, mm -hmm. So whether we're paying hours of pay, dollars, units of pay, et cetera, uh, those proper descriptions uh, would be available. And I can add to my list at any time based on what's available. So. If this pay period, we needed to pay a few employees some commissions and I can just add that commission. If I always want commission to be available, then I save that as my default. And every time I create a payroll, all of these would be selected for me. Moving forward to step three is just a quick confirmation page reminding me if I've got, you know, some employees receiving reoccurring incomes or what my schedule deductions are for this uh, basic example here. So we really don't do any work on the payroll until I get to step four. Now, step four is our time entry page. So if we have a client that's using APS's time and attendance or an external uh, attendance system, then they can simply bring in those hours. Now, from for APS time and attendance, there's no file to grab, right? We're just moving the approved hours from attendance into the payroll grid. If they're using an external attendance system, then I would just say, okay, I'm bringing in a standard Excel document to load my grid. I would just browse for the file and upload that. And it would populate any income that is in that file, whether it's regular hours, overtime hours, sick vacation, bonus commission. If the information is in either APS's time card or another system, it would populate our grid. From this, payroll example, if I am keying in maybe a commission for someone, well, I can simply highlight a field and key in a specific dollar amount. If I need to update or verify information for a particular employee, 
um, from this payroll grid, I can simply click on the employee's name, which will open up their employee profile. So I have full access to make updates on the fly. I don't have to leave the payroll I'm working on uh, to make these last minute adjustments. And then of course, if um, for whatever reason, we needed to go back and add other incomes, I can quickly jump back to step two and add uh, another income description if necessary. Uh, and it's not gonna affect anything we've loaded or, or manually keyed in at this point. The final step of the preview is gonna be our batch report. So our batch report is just gonna summarize the information that we're processing for this upcoming check date. Uh, I can see totals for the different incomes, again, whether we're paying units, hours, or just what the dollar amounts will be. It's totaling up my scheduled deductions. And if I have any employees that have exceeded a threshold value, then I have a simple alert here. So for each income type, I can set up what's the maximum amount someone should receive or maximum number of units. And that way, if I'm keying in data and I make a key punch mistake, well, then the system's gonna alert me that I've exceeded that threshold value. When we click on the submit batch button is all we're doing is putting this upcoming check day in what we call review and release. So the system is calculating the gross to net. Um, I'll do a quick refresh on this tile. And now I can review and release this upcoming payroll for March 1st. Um, so in review and release, again, the system's gonna remind me if I have those alerts for that employee that has the income over the max. I can preview each employee from this screen. We also have a payroll comparison view. So I can compare this check date I'm working on compared to a check date that maybe I did last pay period, last month or last year. So let's just say I wanna compare this one to what I did back in January. So the semi monthly payroll I'm working on today, we're only processing about 14,000 in gross payroll, but the one we processed back in January, we had about 77,000 in gross payroll and the system is highlighting discrepancies. So if your check dates are pretty consistent, um, then uh, the system's gonna quickly identify any income deduction or even tax uh, that is way off from what the normal is. So it just is a quicker way for me to go through and identify the discrepancies and uh, even see the employee details of who was compensated back in January versus who I'm compensating um, in March. Also, to go back one step here to our review and release. Uh, when we're in review and release, you can also have you know, your report manager open. Our report manager will open in a separate window. So I can have this already on one of my other monitors running reports uh, as I'm working throughout the system. I can also run these payroll reports before I finalize the check date. Maybe I just wanna quickly see how this payroll is gonna hit my chart of accounts. So let's just say I wanna see well, for our March 1st check date, and we'll do a detailed entry format. And again, I haven't released this payroll for final processing, but I can still take a quick look at my journal, my GL report. I have the ability to scrutinize my payroll reports, right? Getting into the payroll summary or payroll allocation reports. I could include previous check dates, but I'm just wanting to see what we're processing for March 1st. And this will give me that employee by employee snapshot of you know, their incomes, what department it's being charged to, what the rate of pay is, their gross or taxes, deductions, if there's a company match, and then the net pay per employee. So if I find something that I need to update or there's something that I missed, then I can simply minimize the report window, hit return for edits, and then go back into that uh, payroll that I'm working on in step four and make the adjustments. If everything looks great, then I just simply hit approve for pro final processing and APS takes it from there. Um, so that would be your last step as far as uh, what's necessary. We of course would uh, make sure to initiate your ACH transfer, paying all your employees that are on direct deposit, as well as um, filing all your related payroll taxes for that check. Our final step, of course, post payroll would be to um, run my, my GL export. As Erica mentioned, now again, this is a 
sample here. I'm just producing this one. It's still in review and release, but I'll still be able to preview this. I can apply everyone's deduction to the base department or exclude um, some employer expenses here. But what the system's going to do is going to create the export in the proper format. And then I can simply upload that into um, Dynamics GP. So that's a brief summary of the technology. We stayed pretty high level in a lot of areas. Hopefully you guys got a good understanding and an overall sense of how the system uh, is designed. There's a lot of configurable options. Of course, it's a scalable technology. Um, so uh, a, a lot of our clients may start out somewhat small and they grow into utilizing the full suite of services. But the, as Erica, identified with our first slide, our ultimate goal is to make payroll and HR easier for our clients. Hey, Jason. Yes. Do we have any specific reports um, for education industry clients? So maybe um, some of our clients that have multiple campuses, um, how would they pull a report? What would that look like, that process look like for them in pulling a report across multiple locations? Um, sure, so it, it would, again, it's kind of a broad question there. It would depend on if those locations are in, included into one entity or if they, you know, sometimes the different campuses could be a different entity. Uh, we do mm -hmm. offer global reporting for multiple multiple entities, um, you know, a few of those sample reports we looked at, I'm, I'm still um, in review and release. Now this payroll that I'm working on, I'm not sure if I have employees associated with multiple locations, but for example, if I wanted to look, and I, I could pull a previous check date, but let's just say I'm only wanting to see one of my locations within the demo company, or I wanna see uh, this information for all, uh, so it would start with our first location and then the departments and employees underneath that location. So I can quickly see my labor expense that's being charged for the different departments and then the totals for each location. I only have one employee here for our first uh, location and got a couple of employees for our cancer center for this demo instance. And then, of course, we're giving you totals for all departments when underneath those locations. Uh, so the system does allocate uh, that labor expense by location, by cost center, if you will. And then of course I have uh, grand totals for all the locations here. Thank you, that's definitely helpful. Um, and for, you know, if anybody is looking to get a, a personalized demo, we can certainly dive deeper into this. The system is very robust and vast. So, um, like Jason said, this is very high level, but to get a, um, a personal demo scheduled, of course, reach out to Dynavistics, either Pamela or Bridie, so that they're able to do a discovery and then we can get a demo scheduled and have that more tailored to your uh, specific needs if you are looking to get set up with a new payroll um, and HCM partner. Um, and then also regarding any type of releases, Jason, maybe um, you can address this. So we do come out with new dev each week, but for any type of releases for new functionality um, of a system, how often uh, would you say that we release new functionality and what does that update process look like for the new functionality? Sure, and, and that's a good point because of course we, we understand that um, you know, technology is always evolving. We're continuing to, uh, as you mentioned, Erica, release new features and, and functionality within APS Online. So we do weekly 
releases. Some of them are more small releases. They um, could be specific to an industry or, or maybe even uh, one organization. Uh, but anytime we have uh, more of a, hey, we're adding additional tools or, or there's going to be something that we're releasing that will affect the way someone manages a workflow. Um, so we're going to have a notification about that um, it within uh, you know, our uh, help center here. We're going to have a little icon that, that prompts you to notify you what's coming or what's what we just released. And then we're going to have training documentation and videos associated with each release, as well as you can uh, you know, contact your support team for additional questions. Uh, if it's something a little bit more robust and before we ever release that tool, then we're going to schedule webinars for our clients to join the webinar so they'll understand even prior to the release what's going to be available. And it could be something that they're part of the system they're not taking advantage of, but they uh, want to utilize that tool, which could, of course, prompt them to uh, enable that solution. Sure. And then we can also, they can also look at the help center to um, see what's new as well after those. Um, Absolutely. Those they, they, they would have that, uh, no, they'd be notified right here. The, the icon would light up with a, a notice for that administrator that we have a new feature that they could uh, be notified about. Any more questions? Uh, well, I have to tell you, you guys did a great video um, demo. I, I don't have any other questions. Bridie, have you heard of other questions from the clients? I have not heard any other questions. Okay. Um, well, if we have no other questions, Erica, is there something you'd like to um, touch base on or something you'd like to emphasize? Yeah, certainly. Um, I, you know, definitely want to bring it back to the client experience and our key differentiators. The technology definitely speaks for itself. Um, centralization, the simplified navigation as you see today, the fact that this is a single database, we don't have multiple versions. And the question about, you know, that the new release and, and functionality, these aren't things that we just say, because just to say them, um, they are things that are actually happening. Um, and it's great, because we do have our um, in-house development team that work on these things constantly. So we don't get into situations where we're saying, hey, this is going to be coming out and then you never ever see it. Um, we're transparent and we want to provide visibility to the client at all times. So on top of that, we are honest. And I think that that's something that can be hard to come by. And we want to make sure our clients um, trust us as their partner, not as a vendor, for sure. Um, Uh-oh. Erica. <laughs> I, I was wondering happened. if that was just me. <laughs> I think she, she must have lost connection. Oh. Sure. So trust you, as, trust you as a partner, not just a vendor, right? Yes, please trust me as a <laughs> partner, even though my internet is unstable right now. Um, are y'all still, can y'all still hear me? Yes, yes I can now. Okay, so great. Um, I was just kind of wrapping up with the award-winning support that we have um, back you know, our technology is backed by that award winning support, but also the success model that we have in place. And that is um, not something that you see everywhere. So we are proactively um, on the client side, uh, wanting to make sure that their successes um, are, that they actually come to fruition because their successes are also ours. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, this was a really great demo and I do appreciate all of your time and all the information. It was informative and interesting. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity for us to show uh, your clients our system. And I believe you will have uh, this recording set up 
Um, and so we're excited to talk with any clients that are interested and get a demo set up for them to see the system even um, in further detail. Fantastic. I think you're gonna expect a few calls. Okay, for everyone, thanks for your time and have a great day. All right, you too. Thank you so much. Thank you.